Windows 10 is destined to be killed off by Microsoft this year, and millions of PC users will once again be forced to upgrade or switch to a different operating system. So today I'm going to share with you some of the things that Linux does better than Windows 11 or really any other version of Windows that came before it. One of the big benefits I think we can all enjoy is that switching to Linux isn't going to cost you as much money. You can download any Linux distribution for free, but the savings go a lot deeper than just the software side of things. As a lot of people already know, or will find out when they try to upgrade to Windows 11, is that a lot of PCs are not actually compatible with it. And this is because Windows 11 has a pretty strict TPM 2.0 requirement in order to function on your computer, which is a feature that CPUs older than Intel's eighth generation core processors just generally don't have. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, who cares about 8th gen chips? I mean, they're ancient history, right? But that hardware is still more than capable for most workloads. The 7th gen i7 chips, for example, have four cores and eight threads. And if you were to pair that with a decent graphics card and 16 or maybe even 32 gigabytes of RAM, you could have a desktop that is still powerful enough to play modern video games on, but you might still struggle to get Windows 11 running on that very same PC, which really sucks if you bought your games through Steam because they actually tend to drop support for Windows operating systems within Steam a few years after Microsoft does. Luckily, the Steam Deck runs a modified version of Arch Linux, so gaming compatibility is getting better every day in the Linux world as more game developers actually take Steam Deck compatibility into consideration. And speaking of gaming, another big benefit of running Linux is just having a lower system overhead, which can give you better performance in the programs that you actually care about. A lot of the bloat that's accumulated in Windows over the years has resulted in that operating system needing a lot more power to be able to run somewhat smoothly and still not being as stable as you would expect it to be on a high performance PC. Now it's not quite as bad as it was in the Windows ME and 90 series days, but modern Windows still experiences more bugs that cause kernel crashes than Linux does which is a big part of the reason that Linux servers are preferred for running websites and other applications that need to have a high uptime. The same instability issues can be said for a lot of programs that ship with the operating system. Internet Explorer was a hilariously bad web browser. It was always buggy and slow compared to Chromium browsers and Firefox. And a big reason for that is those browsers are based on open source projects. Millions of people have looked at the code of these browsers and some of them even made improvements to it. It's really hard to create a private development team that can outcompete the entire open source community, which is why even Microsoft decided to make their Edge browser a Chromium clone with some proprietary features bolted on. The open source nature of Linux and its leaner design also makes it much more secure than Windows. There's a lot of eyes on the Linux kernel and the core utilities that make up most distributions, and a lot of companies, including Microsoft themselves, have audited the code in Linux and use it for their own applications, WSL being a great example. But there's only a small select number of people at Microsoft that have really seen the code for Windows 11, and even then, a lot of the developers at Microsoft probably only have access to the source code of the specific subcomponent that they're working on and maybe some of the parts that it interacts directly with instead of every application and every code library and kernel module that makes up the entirety of Windows. So bug fixes generally roll out faster in the Linux world and hell, if you're a talented programmer, you can literally just fix bugs yourself in the kernel or some other application and submit a patch to its maintainers and forever be recorded in history as a contributor to the Linux kernel or to the greater open source world. And that's also a great thing to list on your resume since again, so many companies around the world are using Linux and if you're familiar with it enough to submit code that even Linus Torvalds himself approves of, then that alone could put you at the top of a higher list and maybe get you a pay bump. 
And another big benefit of Linux for the home desktop user is the customizability that is available, again, due to the open source nature of Linux and its very modular design. I generally recommend distros like Linux Mint for beginners because its desktop layout is very familiar to Windows users and there's graphical applications that make installing new programs and customizing your system a breeze and very similar to what you might experience in the Windows world. But if you get brave enough to start using the terminal on Linux and you dip your toe into the world of Rising, you'll discover that there's basically no end to how much you can customize your user interface. This is also part of the reason why Linux is used on so many different kinds of devices and Windows hasn't had a whole lot of success outside of the desktop world. And the broader reason for switching to Linux is to finally have real control over your computer. Because even if you aren't a power user that's going to tinker with your operating system a whole lot, you'll still get more freedom to choose your hardware. Like I said earlier, there's computers that are less than 10 years old that have more than enough power to run typical modern workloads like web browsing, streaming video, emails, office tools, and you can even play modern AAA games on those systems as long as you have a good enough graphics card to pair with that CPU. I'm thinking that this year might actually be a huge opportunity for people to build budget gaming PCs because Windows 10's end of life is going to see a lot of older PCs being scrapped. So secondhand CPUs without TPM 2.0 will probably be pretty cheap. And even though they're gonna bottleneck the performance with the better RTX cards, you could still get acceptable FPS in these brand new games, and I bet the better GTX cards are still going to hold up nicely in games too if you just turn down some of the eye candy and of course you don't use ray tracing. Having control over your PC also lets you protect yourself from getting spied on. It's no secret that Microsoft has turned Windows into a spyware tool that they use to collect data to fuel their ads network and their AI training. And this is part of the reason why Windows has gotten so bad over the years. Microsoft gives the OS away for free now because its entire purpose is to become an endpoint for collecting that data. Now sure, there's settings within Windows to opt out of most of this data collection, but because all of the source code is proprietary, it's really hard to actually verify that you're not sending any data to Microsoft. And because Linux distributions are so decentralized and so many people are wanting better privacy and so they started using them already, the default settings in Linux typically don't opt you into any kind of data collection or telemetry. So better privacy, better performance, cost savings, better security, and more customizability are just a handful of the reasons to choose desktop Linux as your Windows 10 replacement this October. So give it a go, try out Linux Mint on a live USB or a virtual machine today so that you're at least somewhat familiar with it before Windows 11's AI hell is unleashed upon the world. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can buy my stylish merch and accessories for your phone or laptop and even use computers that could have a long second life with a desktop Linux operating system. 10% discount on all items when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.